Welcome to this. And that. Hi, I'm Chris Bartlett from Skaters Landing TV, coming to you today in conjunction with the skating lesson. Thanks to Jenny and David, I'm able to bring this segment to you today. Today we're going to be talking about skate blades, or what I call the artist tool. Three things I want you to know about skate blades are, every figure skate blade has a toe pick at the front. They vary in size and aggressiveness from very, very little tiny teeth for a beginning skater to very, very large um, multifaceted teeth for a higher level skater. The portion behind the topic is called the rocker. It is the roundest part of the blade. And if you can see here, that blade is rocking on that rocker. Okay, easy way to remember that term. The last thing I want you to know about your blade, and you should be very familiar with this term, and many people are not, it's called the blade profile. Each make and model of a blade has a different profile. It's very important for you to understand what the profile of a blade is. Profile of the blade has to do from the lowest toe pick across the rocker and through to the rest of the runner. For Skaters Landing TV, I'm Chris Bartlett. Thanks to Jenny. Thanks to David for having me on the skating lesson today. Until next time, keep it on ice. Hello and welcome to the skating lesson. I'm Jennifer Kirk. And I'm Dave Lees and this is day two from Salt Lake City. So let's jump right into All it. All right. Yesterday's event started with the ice dance. What did you think? We flew all the way just to see Meryl Davis. <laughs> oh my god. Did it live up to the hype? It was so good. So good. It was so tell me everything. What were all of your First thoughts? First of all, when she came out in the dress. Okay, the dress. The purple, she I mean, was we were in a lavender dress. Section. We were sitting. <laughs> People were very excited about the dress. Very excited. Oh my god. And then the program was like immaculate, like impeccable. It really to was. die for. Like it was unreal good. Like in person, it's so fast and everything that they do is ridiculous. And just the movements, everything, they skate is one, the speed, you don't hear any of the uh, scratching on the ice. It's just seriously. And the footwork on one foot and everything, and the twizzles. And I really think that after seeing the Canadian short dance and Marilyn Charlie's short dance, Marilyn Charlie took all summer off. They didn't do any shows. They've just been training for this. I feel like they've worked harder over the past four years, and I feel like it really shows in the level of improvement that they have made since the Vancouver Olympics. And to me, they look to be the best team in the world. I don't see it being so neck and neck. I feel like they're a bit of a step ahead at this point, after seeing the short dances at least. Well, and one of the things that was so impressive is this is their first time out doing this program, and you couldn't tell it at all. They seemed like this was they were ready for the Grand Prix this was later in the season another thing that I really liked about the program is what we saw with Virtue and Moyer their short dance it breaks up a bunch there's all different music cuts and this music the way that it was edited it just fit really thinly together seamlessly together I could have watched them dance all night it was so good <laughs> and they did the Julie Andrews version and uh -huh. I love her but I think what was really interesting is that their short dance you talk about how the elements are seamless mm -hmm. All, none of the other teams had that. You could tell when they were doing each element, it was broken up. I mean, Weaver and Pochette were okay, but the rest of the teams, they're not ready to do the fin step at all. It's such a difficult mm -hmm. dance, and it was really separating the teams. I thought with Marilyn Charlie, they have such a strong grasp of the short dance, and it's not just like a stereotypical short dance like you see from they all of the other it. teams. Like it's a dance. program. Yeah, it's not a free dance. dance. It's not a short dance. It's just a program, and it's a piece. And I think that that was really what sets them apart. I think it's going to give them quite an advantage this season. I agree and I love the last lift. She's arched in her back uh, and her, her hand is so extended and the toe is turned out gorgeous. Let's talk really briefly though about Weaver and Poje as Belle joins us here. Yes. What did you think of their short dance? It's fine. It's, you know what, Weaver and Poje have this thing in their short dance the last four seasons. It's so literal and expected. Like, they're like, we're going to do the fin step. Let's put on 42nd Street. We're going to do, like, let's do the sound of music. And it's so just generic and expected. She had the leopard print on a couple years ago. And it's just, nothing's original. And I also felt that their ice coverage wasn't as good. I know you felt... You I could hear the, the scratching. I mean, it just seems like they were skating safe. And understandably, yes. they're coming back from injuries from last season. Skated really well at Worlds. But they were a skater a team that looked like this was their first time out doing this program but they were holding back a bit i want to see them let go we never really see them just skate without abandon no and they were against marilyn charlie you have to come out and bring it and right. i know that you know they were at least two points lower per judge on components and i felt that the marks were accurate i felt that they did a good job 
but I felt like you're competing against the best in the world, and if you want to get on the podium this year, you need to push it out. The program needs to be more original. It needs to be special. And to me, it was just nice. It was just what a team... It was almost like a compulsory dance, and it was just not anything memorable to me. I thought it was nice and pleasant and better than last year's, but I don't know. They didn't stand out for me. They didn't have great ice coverage. It wasn't a ton of speed. They had good speed. Room for improvement. Yeah. Overall, though, pretty solid skate. So let's jump into the ladies. This was yes. the day of the double axle disasters. What was going on with you? Dick like Button was screaming somewhere. Jenny, what was going on with that forward edge and the double axle? Right. It's a very treacherous edge. Very the treacherous. double axle. You don't realize how dangerous that edge is. Let's start, though, with fifth place, Samantha Cesario. So we were talking about her yesterday, oh. kind of owning it. She went for the triple loop, triple loop, under rotating by half a turn, that second yes. triple loop, and then popping open the double axle. One of the things you did notice during her practice was that she was having some issues on that double axle. It gets more and more tilted as the years go on, and it's extremely tilted. And when she popped it, and she was not happy after her performance, it was, you know, the score was quite low, and it was not a very good day, I think, for Sam. But, you know, she really performed. All the other ladies, she gave the best performance of the night, even with the mistakes, and the she levels. sold the program. Yeah. I mean, some of the other girls, we sat through some interesting ladies' skates. <laughs> well, beating out Sam and also going for the triple loop, triple loop was Emila Cost, fourth place. Again, a few misses, a big splat on the triple flip. What did you think of her and going for the triple loop, triple loop? Do you think that's smart for these skaters who, someone like Sam, who doesn't really seem she's even admitted that it's not as consistent as she I thinks I don't it think Sam has a lot of options, though, because so many of her jumps get, you know, that 70% call mm -hmm. on them. I don't go for know. the bigger point I, I mean, I don't know if she could do a flip toe or whatnot. You, you don't know what she's capable of. I don't think a triple flip double toe is going to really endear you to the yeah. judges. I think yeah. it's going to make you look like a junior or later skater. I think for Amelie Lacoste, she didn't practice well. Um, like the dress. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, hope I expect Sam to probably move up in the long. We would yes. like to see those strong skate from. For both of them, yeah. Yeah, it, it would be good to see a good ladies event. Right. Yeah. And in third place, Courtney Hicks. Some technical issues again, missing on the double How axle. Was she, <laughs> well, she did say in an article that I sent that the double axle has always been kind of a treacherous jump for her. I was talking to her coach a bit last night, saying that she learned the jump when she's younger. It's those habits that are hard to get out of. Um, and what missing the combination the as well. <laughs> <laughs> the combination, again, it was similar to practice. Uh, she landed very far forward. Um, mm -hmm. She would turn. Triple toe, bad landing on that. It was not a cute skate. No, it, it didn't seem like things are coming together. She's the alternate for Skate America, but it's uh, we saw her and she was so consistent at Glacier Falls. I expected her so to come back. And so good in warm up, so good in practice, and the mistakes yeah. in competition. I, I it was a little surprising. She's the alternate for Skate America. You know, hoping for some assignments here, but it wasn't her day. And I think it's going to be interesting to see how she does in the long compared to the other ladies. Well, it also really wasn't Agnes Zawadzki's day. Open no. her triple left is her money jump. Oh, I mean, that thing man is huge. big. Like it is enormous. <laughs> enormous. And then going up, missing. I mean, we kind of called this yesterday yeah. when we after we watched practice or two days ago, I should say the triple triple yeah. uh, turning on on the triple toe loop, and then again missing the double axle, which was really surprising. Yeah. She did miss it at nationals. Last Last year too, so I don't know if this is something that has been kind of a hiccup for her over the years as well. Yeah, I, I noticed with her, she looked so much more mature and so much more sophisticated. She's really been working on that presentation. She looked very senior. She looked the oldest of the ladies mm -hmm. out there and the most mature. I think that if she can get these mistakes, you know, behind her, that she'll be very consistent. It'll be interesting to see if she goes for the triple loop today. What not? Right, I think the long is going to be really telling for Agnes it, because the short, those are her strong elements. She's and usually really uh, a much higher in the short, and then that consistency starts to plague her in the long inconsistency, I should say. But let's talk about the program. The lady of the night. All right, so we saw the debut, or I, has she done it before? I think she's she did it at a competition this summer, perhaps. But the debut for all of us of Gracie Gold's new short program, Overall impressions, what did you think about it? It was, we really wanted to like this, first of all. It was Gershwin, you think Gershwin, mm -hmm. da, so da, 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 really well, yes. Thinking like this could bring out Gracie Gold. We were excited. The dress was, you know, it was nice. It's nice, yeah, she yeah. looked good. She, I thought, you know, people had different opinions. I liked it, but, so she goes out, and I'm, thinking, I'm expecting Gershwin. Mm -hmm. I did not expect the Shannon Miller violin music from hell to come on. It was so long, and like I wanted earplugs. Like it was the worst Jeez. music I have ever. I I cannot imagine that Gracie Gold was like sitting down, 
it, with her mother and being like, this is the music that I want to skate to. Like, I think that was the thing. It didn't seem like it was Gracie. No one. Feel like well, it didn't seem like anyone would want to skate no, to that music or I listen feel to like it. They, they took the criticism last season that she had to work on that second mark, really work on improving the packaging, skating more maturely, and they went to Marina Zueva. But I feel like Marina just said, I am going to control you. I am going to pick the music. I am going to do everything. Marina and they usually just has went along with it. Than that. Yeah, it, like, just, it didn't seem like it meshed with her personality. Her styling looked better. The moves that she yes. was doing, if you had it on mute, were, were improved. Great. Yes, she's extending through her fingers and the triple S, triple toe, showing grit, holding on, even though she did land that combination forward, holding on to the triple S. She too missing the double axle is a little bit sh of a shocker because usually she's pretty consistent on that element. But I think the thing about the program is it starts out and there's some moves at the beginning, very some like <laughs> Russian arm movements. Yes. Really good, kind of intriguing, but the music kills it. It's that screechy violin that so many of us were. It never gives it a to. chance, frankly. And yeah. I, I, I can't imagine Frank Carroll listening to this every day and being like, "The Gold Girl." Oh, I like a short program. Well, the thing about it is, she's switching to him now, right before the start of the season. Do you think he's going to change these programs? What do you think? I don't know. Frank she's running do? out of time, and they have work to do. And mm -hmm. she really has been working. Technically, with though, she's really strong. It's yes. Like, it's the other, the it's packaging. The, that it's, you know, how much time do they have? She's someone who has struggled with consistency in the past. Mm -hmm. She's now more of a favorite. She's going and there's more tension. I don't know if they're going to be able to really have the time to change the programs, but something needs to be done, even with the music edit or something, if they can just tone it down, because it's so blaring and screechy and everyone in the crowd was like, what? Was that? And the thing is, we all. She looks like such a super. And she has that charisma. She that has you want charisma. her to do really well. And this is it. Just doesn't fit her that no. well. But interesting to see her long program today. Let's jump into the men now. The final. But we sat through copious amounts of skater after skater. Well, how are the pairs, Jenny? Oh. <laughs> I'm just so excited to get to the men. I completely skipped that. Jenny, you forgot that that Paris event happened. <laughs> Who could forget that? It's actually terrifying. <laughs> okay, let's start with Zang and Bartholomew. This set the tone. Uh, this set the tone. You know, the it's a much era. better program. I said that they looked like regional champions in the short. They at least won sectionals <laughs> with this program. It was a big improvement. I actually thought it was much better program to Les Mis. I did too. However, she's someone who had a disaster when she was with Taylor Toth when they were at Skin America. Mm -hmm. It was one of the epic disasters of all time. This program last night, <laughs> when the lifts weren't going up, and they were like, Get it up! Get it up! They were like, Two lifts left, and it, I mean, oh my. We were all just holding, I mean, it was scary. We were holding our breath for them. He did manage to get it up at the end. Very proud of them. She's showing grit, landing one of the throws later in the program. It just, I think the thing that we noticed, and also fourth place, Castelli and Schnappier, had some similar, since you could tell that fatigue here in altitude yes. was an issue you last tell night. You trained. Yeah, you really could. And in terms of Castelli and Schnappier, went for the quad sow cow, two-footed it, but really impressive, had trouble on the side-by-side -side jumps. Again, that connection isn't quite there between the two of them. And it was a mod. There was a groan from the audience. When <laughs> we knew what we call from the opening position. Uh, Actually, her dress was gorgeous. I thought that the program, that type of music works well for them because yes. they aren't the most artistic in terms of um, like a ballerina yeah. on the ice, but um, yeah, not their best skater. Not their best skater at all. She, I, she was a brave girl during that program because he was getting winded and she had to go up in those lifts. I know, you have those pair girls again, that grit and the, <laughs> uh, and the determination. Can you know Shay though, really the surprise of the event? Really, I the think they made a name for themselves this weekend. They really stood out. They have the look. You know, there were little mistakes. There were, you said that he had a magnet down in his hand. I mean, yes, everything kept touching down on the triple cell. Everything was getting touched down, but I thought that they really looked senior. They had mm -hmm. more presentation, and that goes she a long way. That. She has that thing where she skates out, and for about 30 seconds before the music even starts, she like gets into character a la an ice dancer. Yes. Kind of love it. Always the dress is great. You know what? And she looks ready for uh, the senior international and level, more so than other teams that were there. Yeah, and they were a team that didn't lose it at the end. It seems like no. they do really train their programs, but it came down to a battle of the bleach blondes. Oh my god, Jay. <laughs> So, Katie Denny coming out, she looks like a Katie lady Katie Denny, they are classing her up. Right, she looked really good, Skinny, and I thought the fan of the opera, you talked about their, their short program music yesterday, I thought this music was really strong for them. It Jenny, is generic. you up at the end. I did! I 
like such a moment for them. It was after all they went through last season with his injury. It was really great to see their first time out there. Did you see him laughing during the own performance at one point? Did I really he? want to know what that was about. You were going and he's going around the corner and he's laughing. And we're like, what is going on? He was really enjoying it. He said, though, in an article this morning on Nice Network that he was kind of tired at the end of the program. And I mean, you have to think about those guys now that they are backloading these programs to get the 10% bonus. Fatigue is going to come into a factor. But just... they looked more trained. Again, she was yes. gritty as hell. She is like so crooked in the air sometimes. <laughs> Bust it out! Like, Bust it out! Gonna fall. Wouldn't want to mess with her. No, and so she, they skated, and we thought a standing ovation. It was a moment. I'm tearing up, and you think, okay, like that is a tough act to follow. I don't think so. Oh, really? No, because that not... Britney Spears music came on, and Kirsten Moore Towers comes out. Not even looking at him. She never looks at him. She's oh, like, no. She's bopping away. Bopping, looking at the looking audience. At every, like, she everyone. stares at you in the audience. It's very oh, impressive. Oh, she wants you to know that she is about there. Go out there and land it. With that, like, like, curly little ponytail. Yeah. She's got it all together. And they went out, and literally from the start of the program to the end, where the <laughs> last lift, where they almost crashed into the boards, she was going to stop the program. It looked like she could have done it three more times. Yeah. She was not tired at all. I love to. And, uh, she was just like, and they were done. Yeah, and I love he gave a quote this or after the event last night saying, no, he he felt that fatigue, the altitude at the end of the program, and she goes, no pain, no gain. She's like, no pain, no gain. Yeah, no. You gotta, you gotta get through it. Scary girl. Another thing that was really impressive with them, they opened with the triple toe sequence. Yes. So, tri triple toe, and then do the triple sal which yes. was really strong. We see Sevchenko and Sequoia. Struggle with Struggle with their triple sals, yeah. taking notes. They're really strong element skaters, mm -hmm. I think. You know what, their technical mark is really their strength, and when you see it in person and they land everything, it's very effective. And that gives them the moment at Worlds. They're not as artistic as the other teams, but their elements, it's hard to watch pair skating, watch people land everything consistently and not get excited about it really? and not have a moment. And, so. to, and that connection between the two of them, we saw them at Skate Detroit and it was, to put it kindly, uh, a disaster. <laughs> it was not a good program missing a couple of, or a death spiral and a spin. This, it just looked so impeccable like everything was just really judged together very nicely don't want them to peak too soon but no and they're a team that struggled with that in the past so mm -hmm. we'll have to talk to them about that in a couple of hours now <laughs> can we get on to the men my oh Max my god Aaron. i'm wearing my max Aaron shirt for you okay so this 2014 is the year of the man cleavage yes like everyone to take note no lady cleavage it's only man cleavage only the man max we're all wearing black this season all wearing black and all wearing like the, I, do you know what i liked about max's outfit too it was all the same color there was no breaking up because he isn't the tallest guy he doesn't he have sleek. those really long lines that they're doing a great job of showing off his body but before we get into max we have to start with Grim. Oh, oh no i want to do an honorary mention yes. for chris Calusa. so we saw my neighbor at the hotel <laughs> right he, he's i'd say he's living next door to uh dave he's in the room next to dave we saw him in the hotel lobby yesterday watching morning the secret. watching this always a good decision to channel oprah always a good call and you she is going for that oscar and the butler and he is going for it with that quad loop this olympic season was it around he stood it up and then the rest of the program was, was just oda o face. everyone loved it the level of oda o face Oh, he, he reached 100% on yes. the Oda Richter scale. <laughs> oh. Dang! What is that? Wearing that footwork. And we loved it. He yes. was so into it. He was really the crowd's favorite up until, you know, the very end. The crowd just ate him up. He really had one of the performances of the night, if not the performance. It was spectacular. Everyone loved him. I know Tim Delensky loved that he skated to Grig and, you know, a lesser known movement. And the music was good. And it was really telling because there was a lot of bad music going on yes. yesterday. Well, speaking of music, Grant Hoshin, I want to get everything that you have to say. So it, the music starts and we're all Just sitting there. Just describe who you were sitting with. I, I'm sitting with all of Dave's uh, <laughs> skating <laughs> legend. Like they know everything about skating and everything about everything. So we're sitting there. The music starts and we all think, okay, it's Michelle. He's, he no, loves it Michelle starts, Kwan. We he's know. always tweeting photos to right. brag to everyone. You know, Grant like runs around singing Beyonce before the event when he's leaping around. And the music starts. Okay. And it's not just any Kwan. Music. It's the 98 short. Right. And you just Girl, hear the row behind us go, Oh, uh, who is he? Oh, damn. You know, everyone is like, What? What is going down? And then, like, immediately, the quad, bam, fall. Oh, it was That's a what really happens bad when you use fall. Michelle's music. Other end, 
Bam, quad, fall. You can't they were do that. Fall. I know you're she friends with Michelle. You can't just go thinking that you can do a. Okay, Plushenko is doing the farewell tour. You can't go doing the, the Michelle, Michelle Quad's Quad. greatest hits if she herself is not going to get out there and skate. I'm and then he goes into the song of the Black Swan, goes into the triple loop, and like Michelle Quad, it was a little bit scary. I was like, oh, oh hell. <laughs> Grant, Smartly doubled um, the triple axle. Smart choice. That was smart after missing the, the opening two quads. He's so artistic and love he's a gorgeous skater. We love his skating. We love his skating. It's just the music choice. It's a little bit of an eye roll, I have to say. <laughs> it was just, it's so funny. And I love, like, all of Michelle Kwan's music. Yeah, not always just, together. Not right, the no, rap button off in the last one. It makes me really want to watch Plushenko's program this year, though. I want to see how they put it all together. Like, oh, Grant. Oh, hell. That was... <laughs> Shout out for moment of the night. Moment of the night. Joshua Ferris, though, what do you think about him? He had a okay, lot Joshua of Joshua Ferris is someone just. last year we said needed to give more face and more um, presentation. This program, it gave it. That. Yeah, yes, he was program. going for Schindler's List. List, and he was like, he was feeling. Oh, that. at the like, end when he like he goes down, I think it's, he was on his knees or something, and he's like crying. Yes. I mean. He didn't have to act after that performance, you know that. He wasn't feeling the best after that. A bunch of spins that he had. He had that missed. psycho killer sultry face going on with his At work. the beginning, yeah. Yes. Oh, God. Once he gets the elements in, he did... He uh, did triple the quad, and it was an issue his, in the warm-up as well. Yeah. He, and he's someone who everyone says Josh does not train consistently. Mm -hmm. He never has. He, he owned it, though. He about yeah. it. Um, he owned it in the article afterwards. But he's someone who brings it for competition, and in the past he hasn't brought the presentation as much, and he really sold it. The audience loved him. Mm -hmm. His styling is great. Again, the costume, I don't know what it's like really bedazzled sparkles little and a little red yeah, thing had really to do fit. with Schindler's List, but it was... Uh, but gorgeous program yes. once he's able to put the elements together. Stephen Carrier is surprised. Talk about psycho her. killer face. Oh my gosh, he that focus, he's kind of scares yes. me. The thing that I noticed the most about him as a second mark has improved so much over the past years working with David Wilson on this program. You could really see that triple axel is better. Yes. The quad was better. He did sit down on it, but getting it backwards, he looks like he's much more linear and straight. That triple axel has top. really improved since yeah, there's he's not that. Peter. <laughs> it's, he's erasing it. The second one was missed, but the first one was fantastic in combination. He trains his programs. It's a, it's a novel idea, really, at the senior level. And well, you could tell <laughs> that even with some of the mistakes, I mean, the quad did look a lot better again. Again, that he didn't let the intensity down. He had that really intense gaze and he kept it up even if he was you know, stepping out of the triple S, triple toe at the end. He kept going, kept giving it all to that program. And again, it's really nice to see that he's worked so hard on the second mark. Yeah, what's he going to do after skating? Because he's an intense Lawyer. <laughs> Lawyer. Yes. Prosecutor. He can he go is... work for Mr. Aaron doing something. <laughs> Who knows? He has that Aaron intensity. But speaking of Aaron, we have to talk about the man of the night. Max Aaron, it was all about the man cleavage. <laughs> Loved seeing that. So in the warm up, he goes out and in under two minutes, he's doing four quads. The quad toe and everything in person is just incredibly impressive. The way that he skates, I don't think it translates necessarily no. if you're watching it no. on video. What it's is that machismo that Max Aaron has when he skates around there with those hockey crossovers and he's going into that <laughs> quad style, like a little bit manic and he's it's a little bit jerky. It's Whoa. In person, <laughs> he throws himself into those jumps, especially his triple axel in person. It's wow. It's incredible. But and speaking of the jumps, they weren't there last night, missing a few of the quads to begin. And he was pissed when the program pissed. was over, understandably. Pissed. But I'm almost glad that we saw him miss the elements because what we were able to see was that the program can stand on its own. And last season, had he had those technical two snaps, errors, so that was about it. The yeah, program. the program wouldn't have been able to stand up with the mistakes. So I love the program. What did you think? He talked about how he was going to use sections of Carmen that weren't as known. There were. And there were some. Dave missed the moment, the Evan likes to check body rubbing moment. All right. I have one eye on Tomsey because I'm watching Tomsey. The whole eyes on Tomsey. I know. Always. <laughs> oh, when he missed it, when he missed the quantum of Tomsey, was just like. <sighs> Because they're talking about putting the quad toe in the short, and it was just, oh, it was, the it was first a moment. Time out there and then the hand down on the quad, I mean, it was, yeah. But, um, you know, so I'm trying to tweet Tomsey, Max that? Aaron, iPhone without autocorrect. Oh, Lord. It was intense, and I missed it. I missed it both times. And it was good. I think this program, we talked a little bit earlier about Gracie and getting these programs, needing to work on that second mark and not is staying authentic to herself, and I think they achieved this with you know, Max. when they take their Instagram photos, he should talk to her about being authentic on the ice, because it's working for him. It so. really is, and I think this is as artistic. You talk about Grant, 
such an artist on the ice, and Max will never be a Grinch haunting, never. but this is as artistic, I think, as you can get Max, and he's showing himself as an artist on the ice. He was going for that arm of that one he was, he, the fingers, he was really extending, you yes. could tell. And so often, skaters who are known for their technical prowess will say that they're going to work on their artistry, and maybe it's a 10% increase. <laughs> but with it, Max, it really did show that he put the effort in, and it was really, really strong. And yeah, he's really skate. trained it like um, it's just another element in the program. Another quad. He's just attacked it. And I think I like his approach to this Olympic season, just attacking everything. And I, I think, you know what, he has the jitters out now. He uh -huh. kind of, he looked nervous when he was skating, he especially did. in the first half. I think he looked bad. He was landing <laughs> everything. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I think I expect him to have a better performance at Skate America and he to did. really build as he gets used to it. I remember, I remember he said he doesn't have a lot of time to get experience, so he's using every opportunity. Smart. I expect him to build. I agree. So today, Dave, we have a very big day. We have a pair of interviews, and then we go in for the ladies' long program this evening. And the Scheherazade, Meryl Davis Scheherazade. Are you very excited? I can't. Words can't even express how excited Dave is to see Meryl <laughs> skate to Scheherazade. Yes, we are not going to miss it this time. No. <laughs> we have Nick on speed dial we get lost going to the arena we cannot wait and we want to thank all of you for all the interaction that you've had with us over the past couple days we on twitter it. and facebook love talking to you guys keep it up today we can't wait to interact as well and let's talk about skaters landing really yes. quickly okay then. so skaters landing the online retailer skaterslanding.com if you go on the website i mean they have everything boots blades apparel but all of the stock boots and blades that are on there and they have an enormous assortment. Uh, you pick out what you want and you email TSL at skaterslanding.com and you get a 10% discount. So that's really exciting and really great. I actually have to get new skates myself. So you'd also like to thank Kevin Kwasnessy for our graphics and all of you guys for tuning in. Yes, we want to just give a shout out to Veretto Sport as well. Uh, another um, exciting thing we'll be announcing like, yeah. you know, very soon. So as always, we want to remind you to hold an edge. Show off your man cleavage. I, I look, look sexy. sexy. Bye, Bye guys. guys.